G'day everyone, hope you're well. Welcome to another Photoshop Friday. Now in this episode we're going to look at the Remove tool. This was added to Photoshop 2023 in May of 2023. And it's an, like an AI generated spot healing tool or remove tool. It's pretty amazing, um, does a fantastic job. I'm going to show you how you can use it and how I use it in my workflow, which is not actually for removing objects, but for tidying things up. Now you will need to be running at least Photoshop 2023 in version 24.5. I'll just show you how to find that. So when you're in Photoshop, just come up here and just have a look at about Photoshop and you'll see the release here or your version. So you need to be running at least 24.5 to have the remove tool. Now the keyboard shortcut for the remove tool is J. Okay, you'll also find it obviously in your toolbar. Now I had some trouble when I first um, tried to find it. It wasn't there. So we click on the um, spot healing tool brush nested area here in our toolbar. Just click and drag out. And here is where we have all of our different options for content aware tools, healing brush and spot healing brush you notice they all have the shortcut of J so it should be nested in there if it's not then what you need to do is come down to these three little three little drop downs here just click across and go edit toolbar that'll bring this window here up now just scroll down on your left hand side here until you find your J's so these are all of the, the spot healing brush uh, healing brush etc etc and now on the right hand side you'll find it with an extra tool so you may have to scroll down mine's sitting right here so we've got two options I can just sit that into the toolbar where it will sit by itself as a tool or I can nest it inside the healing brush tools so I'm going to nest mine in there so that they're all together we click done okay and now when we come across here our remove tool will be nested in there. Okay, I'll just show you some of the controls you have over this tool. Obviously we have a brush size so we can increase or decrease the brush size. You can do that up here on this little drop down on a slider. Well, I prefer to just use my keyboard shortcut so it's the left and right brackets. Okay, so the right hand bracket on the keyboard it's next to the, the P. Uh, will increase and then the left hand bracket will decrease. Now when you make these adjustments you're best to do it on a on a an empty layer so it becomes non-destructive. So we would add a layer here. So I've done that just by clicking this plus down the bottom here. And because we are doing it this way we will want to have this box here tick sample all layers. So it'll sample all the layers underneath. Now the other options we have is we can make the tool work after each stroke uh, which means you need to tick that box so that means as we make one stroke and when we remove the tool it will make that adjustment if that's unticked then we'll, we'll make um, we'll make our brush strokes and we'll need to tick uh, this little tick box here to make the tool work and I'll show you there's sort of two different ways that I use that. On a larger area you probably want to leave this unticked and I'll just show you why because we can just add to a selection here so we can make that selection you know we can add to the selection as we go along. The other thing you can do with this tool is once you've made this selection so I selected all of that and decided that I don't actually want that bit up the top we can come up here and we can now click minus and we can subtract so we can do a little tidy up Okay, so let's start with that and we'll just hit the tick button. Okay, you can see that's done a fairly good job. Now what we can do is just come in here a little bit closer to the tram and we'll just tidy up this bit here. So here I'll use my brush a bit smaller and here I want to just do little brush strokes. So we're going to tick this one so I can just come in and brush. Okay, and it will remove it as I work with each brush stroke. Okay, we'll just try along the edge of the tram and see what it does. 
Okay, for, so for the size of this, what we're dealing with here, that's that's done a, a pretty good job. So I can now turn that layer on and off. Okay, and we can see it's removed that car nicely. Um, subjects this size, it does a, a really good job. We'll just quickly remove this car in the back here and the side of this bus. Um, so I'll do the same procedure again. I'll just turn that off to make our brush a bit bigger. And we'll just select this car to start with. Okay, and we'll just roughly do the brush. Don't get too close to the tram. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we'll just come into that tram area. I'll just tick this box so that we can remove with each brush stroke. I'll just come down a bit in size there. Now I just want to get rid of these white areas through here. So I think it does a really good job for this sort of thing. It's not perfect along this edge, but it's certainly workable. And that's like on a, on a fairly large area. So I'll just turn that layer on and off. Okay, so you can see it's done a, a pretty good job removing those large objects. Okay, there is certainly limitations to removing large objects. I'll just show you this jetty. I thought I'd have a go at just taking the whole jetty out. doesn't really do a very good job. You'd, you'd have to do a lot of tidying up and a lot of cleaning up to sort of make that work. So um, I wouldn't really recommend it for, you know, removing super large objects. I think, well, why would you photograph that in the start if you had to remove it? Um, but stuff like this, it is very good for, say, just removing these boats. I'll just dump that layer and I'll start again. So we just add another layer. Just come in here. Okay, and so we'll, we'll leave it remove after each stroke. Just make our brush a little bit bigger. Let's just take this boat out first. Okay, so this does a really good job. This is be better than any other tool I've ever used. So if you had areas like this where you want to... Like, look how clean that is. We'll take this boat here out. Just see how it does that little horizon line. Yep, perfect. These two here. I'll come into that horizon line and just see what it does. Yeah, look at that, it's left the horizon line and that hill there perfectly. Just try this little boat here. Yep, perfect. This is quite hilarious because I, I shoot this area um, on some day workshop shops that I run and I always say it's better in winter because all these boats aren't moored out here and um, in summertime it's hard to get this shot without any boats because there's too many there. So anyway, now we've got a tool that can get rid of them. <laughs> uh, okay, so with this tool, um, I've been thinking, okay, well, how can I use it? What can I use it um, in my workflow in situations where I need to, rem well, not remove things, but sort of for me, it's more repairing things. So this is a typical shot where I have these issues of like light reflecting um, onto sort of reflective areas and you get these hot spots and this happens all the time uh, if you're shooting like this was dappled sunlight so there was beautiful light coming through it wasn't full shade but then we have just these issues where we have areas like this and this is really hard to fix I've um, used a lot of different techniques in the past and it sort of tidies it up a bit but it really doesn't do a good job so this tool uh, is absolutely fantastic for this type of thing. So let's start on this tree trunk area. Um, so I'll just zoom in a little bit. So this uh, I would tackle just this little bit here and then we'll work on this bit. I won't do the whole area at once. So we've got remove after each stroke. We've got that ticked. So we'll just fill that bit in there. Okay, and we'll just come down into this area. 
And we'll just start filling that and I think we can do all of this in one go. Now we'll just come over this bit here again. Let's just try this leaf down here. We'll see what it does there. So sometimes it does change things, but it it's fine. It does a fantastic job. So I'll just turn that off. Okay, so we've just now repaired that area very quickly. Um, way better than any other way I could have done it. And then the same thing with these leaves here. We get these highlights on these leaves that are just impossible to fix sometimes. And it hasn't done a very good job on this one because it's removed half the leaf. It fixed that one there. See how it filled that one there? And we might have to take this one right out. Okay, we just come in here and repair these. This highlight in here. That one there. Let's just do this leaf over here. Okay, so if I zoom back out, um, don't forget that is a small part of the image. So that's done a fantastic job just fixing that. The other issue you can have with waterfall images is quite often, you know, off in the distance we get these burnouts coming through the trees and sometimes we want to repair or fix that. So we can use this tool for doing that as well. This highlight over here, this spot through the sky, you can see it fixes that very nicely. We'll just try this tree trunk down through here. So don't forget it is a remove tool, so it will want to remove things. Um, so if you're working on a larger area like that, like a trunk, uh, just be careful that if you know if if you don't want to remove it, and if you only want to just work or or fix things that are next to it, then you need to just come in a little bit closer, be a bit more selective with your tool, and run it sort of along the side of that area, and then it won't remove the actual. Um, tree trunk itself. So we could come in here and repair all of this. Now the closer we get and the smaller we work the better it is. And we can just fix these little highlight blown out areas in here. So fantastic tool. I really love it. Um, I'm not a big fan of AI but this does use AI to work things out. Um, and I think in this situation it's a uh, it's a fantastic tool and don't forget even though it's a remove tool and you've probably um, been you know told and shown that it's for re removing large objects but it certainly has other uses and in my workflow I definitely go to it now it's my go-to tool I don't use spot healing even for dust spots I just leave it on that Okay guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.